Dave at the allotment. Dave, what are you after this afternoon? Hello, welcome to Dave's allotment. Still cracking on at the allotment. Get the kettle on. It's a lovely day. See you in a bit. See you, Jimmy. Hello, folks. What a lovely day it is. I thought I'd sit down and tell you a little story. As you can probably tell by the title, um, I'm going to tell you about me allotment history in this video because it's interesting. So sit back and enjoy the show with a cuppa. Get in. Right, yeah, I was there. Uh, I've even wrote some notes so I don't forget. Yeah, this video isn't about gardening, it's about me allotment history. Um, over the past few months, I've had quite a few comments about me soil. Um, now, getting soil like that doesn't come overnight. <laughs> I'll get onto that later. Um, there's a couple of other people asked, How old is my allotment site? Well, years ago I did some research into this because I, I, I do find it quite interesting. Um, so I went to the library, I got some local maps, you know. And this, this allotment site was made at a, in around 1870s because um, I couldn't like find any specific map. But this area here was part of the farmland which belonged to Billy, the Billy Mill, which is where the garage is built now. It was just there. Um, so around about 1870, which makes it the Victorian times, um, which is interesting. Now the Victorians had a different idea about allotments and to compare to what they are today. And they used to treat it like a sort of family day out um have a picnic here and all that you know so this area here well uh, underneath the bark chippings is bricks now all them bricks have come from an old coal mine that was just over the road which was knocked down years ago um in the victorian times so these bricks have been down since then anyway i was digging further over where the, I thought the bricks had ended and I got to a, a well two foot down was another another path of bricks like so they must have had in the, in the Victorian times there must have been a sunken garden here it would be it would be amazing to excavate it all but <coughs> I haven't got time for that so I like I say two foot down under here is bricks all like there's two steps going down and then just bricks so I just filled it back in but anyway um where was I yeah this was farmland and then around about the 1870s it must have been changed into an allotment site um but I was watching a video um, Nigel put up muddy boots we was talking to a bloke called Dave Taylor. Now, not Dave Taylor from um, New Zealand. It's this old fella. Watch the video, he's interesting. This this old guy, I love listening to old fellas talking about allotments, it's great. Anyway, he was saying, in the, it started the, the medieval times, and the traditional size allotment is 90 foot by 30 foot. Well, it just so happens that is the size of my allotment give or take a few foot it's 30 foot wide by about 97 foot so a traditional size plot that's the Victorian times like I say but I that video it's interesting um, Nigel watch it if you should watch it if you haven't already getting back onto my plot I can I can date 
someone being on my allotment to 19, uh, 1881 I was digging over there years ago you know as you do dig dig and this coin popped up out of the ground now it's I don't think I'll be able to focus in but at first I thought it was just an old penny you know from the war but then I noticed I'll see if I can uh, get a little zoom in on it but then I noticed like the the guy had a beard and I say like, well that's not King George so I cleaned it up a bit and it's a Napoleon the third Napoleon the third coin from 1881 that was there just in the soil and now that fascinates me who put that coin there where did it come from in the first place we would have been at war with France around about then who someone's dropped it out the pocket or something or it could have been a souvenir from the war I don't know but it just makes you I love history especially local history and especially allotment history that's fascinating um, and another thing as well my apple tree now that this is interesting as well a couple of years ago I don't know if you can remember but Nigel uh, Nigel Deacon who was an apple expert identified my tree as being a clay gate permain and here's the interesting part clay gate permain apples were introduced into England around about 1880 now that apple tree looks around about well this allotment as far as I know is 138 years old or something like that so that tree must have been planted around about that time to have like that coin next to it as well you know it's fascinating I don't know if anybody else is interested in this um, I don't know even if anybody's watching this I'm going to carry on anyway so like I say the, from the Victorian times they used to have I've, in the past I've dug up like oyster shells and that and an old fella over the back there he did a little bit of research and he says that the Victorians used to come here have a picnic treat it like a family day out and treat themselves to oysters and stuff you know because it wasn't a, a working man's thing back then it was a, a posh you know, not, not everybody had an allotment in the Victorian times which brings us on to the next part now I don't know when the actual allotment phase sort of died out back then but as you know it was um, it made a resurrection <laughs> what is it called? a resurgence in the 1940s when the war happened dig for victory and all that and um, obviously there's been people here that I've got an old allotment uh, an old air raid shelter as you know now that's been here since the war you know people used to have um, the air raid shelters in the allotments and that's been there since the war so me, the allotments been well looked after for as long like well I've had my garden now for 20 years and I've worked it every year and I was talking to Ray one day he's been here since 1973 and he remembers when he first come there was an old Scottish fella who um, called Jock <laughs> unreal eh <laughs> an old Scottish fella called Jock um, and he had been here Forty years, so he had his allotment since the war, or just after the war, something like that. And Ray says every year he used to manure the garden every year. He had a big pile, like at the, where my gate is. There was an old shed. Now he used to pile his um, manure in there, right? And Ray was telling us this. So it was one day he come because he thought it was a. Caddy shed 
come on in, loads of manure in there, just dried out and that. And um, he thought, oh, I'll try and grow some, I don't know, mushrooms he must have been trying to grow in there. Anyway, he had this candle thing, didn't he? And the, the, comp, uh, the, the manure was that dry that some, well, not somehow, the, the candle fell over and the, whoo, the whole thing went up. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm drifting from the story a bit there, but that's a little bit of the allotment history. So like I say, I can go back as far as 1881, definitely. But who knows what was here before that? Because in the past, as I've been digging, I've, I've dug these up. Now, all you people who are into rocks and that, will know that is slate. Eh, uh, that is flint. Big chunks of flint. Now, I, I, I know a bloke who's into, like, rocks and stuff. And he said he had never seen flint that big just lying round anyway. Um, not round here anyway. And another thing I dug up, and for those of you who watch Time Team will know that is a lump of iron ore slag. Now, that to me can only mean they've been working this land since the medieval times, making uh, flint things, melting iron and stuff like that. It's interesting, really interesting. Um, I'll just quickly read my notes here, just in case I've missed anything out. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. No, said that. Yeah, I've gone through everything. So from Victorian times, through to the war, through a jock having it, from the war, to about 10 years before I had the garden, and for since 20 years since then, I've been working, the, I've been part of this allotment history. It's fascinating. It's so fascinating, folks, that I might start a little challenge here. And, uh, because I'm interested in, to know about your allotment history. So I'm, I've just thought of it this right now. I'm going to nominate three people off the top of my head. Um, flies. Right, who can I nominate? I have to have a little think about this. Nigel, Muddy Boots. I'll nominate you. Um, let us think. Tony O'Neill. I don't know if it's going to be worth it because I know you've changed gardens over the years. So anyway, I'm, not, I'm going to nominate Nigel Murray Boots. I'm going to nominate UK Here We Grow. And then I'm going to nominate oh, Jeff. Jeff Foreman. Now that'll be an interesting one. So that's it, folks. I've started a little challenge here. It's not a challenge, I'm just interested to know about your allotment history. And, uh, and another thing, how big is your plot? Mine is the traditional size, which is 90, well, it's 95 foot by 30 foot. So, two little challenges in one. What is your allotment history and how big is your plot? Go for it. Right, I'm going to finish my kettle. The garden water inside the greenhouse. Season a bit.